Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. All right, everybody. Welcome to Let's Master English podcast episode 15. That's right. We're weekly now. So every Monday, you, this is Monday, my time, you will get a new podcast unless I have some sort of emergency. Thank you very much for downloading the podcast. Welcome to the show. Once again, today we have some news, some great vocabulary, good listening practice. Then we have Country Shane and some Questions, questions and answers. I got a couple of questions today. And at the end of the podcast, I have a special announcement. And I think you'll be interested. So anyway, let us get started. Enough chit-chat. Let's begin with the news. It's happened to all of us. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine and our yummy doesn't come out. We shake the machine, kick it, add more money, but nothing. Most of us just walk away. But not one man from Iowa. While on break at his job, his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. So he used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. He got three more to boot. Unfortunately... He got booted from his job, too. That was pretty fast. Let's go a little bit slower. It's happened to all of us. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine, and our yummy doesn't come out. We shake the machine, kick it, add more money, but nothing. Most of us just walk away, but not one man from Iowa. While on break at his job, his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. So, he used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. He got three more to boot. Unfortunately, he got booted from his job, too. Oh, boy. This, this is actually a very funny story, but I know it's pretty difficult. We're talking about a vending machine. Does everybody know what a vending machine is? You know, you add some coins, maybe some dollars, or whatever the currency is in your country. And then you can get a coffee or some chips, some candy bars, some gum, something like that. That's a vending machine. Well, sometimes vending machines, you pay money, but they don't give you what you paid for. It's terrible. And that's this story. So the first sentence, it's happened to all of us. It has happened to all of us. What is it? We don't know. We have to wait. But listen to the pronunciation. It's happened to all of us. It's happened to all of us. It's difficult to hear the H in happen and happened to. That D and T go together. To all of us, all of us, lots of connection to. For pronunciation tips like this, I want you to get my DDM lessons. I'll talk about that at the end. They're free. <clears throat> okay, it's happened to all of us. We all have this experience. What experience? What is it? Now I explain. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine. Okay, so vending machine, I explained that. That's the machine where we add coins and buy candy. Overpriced. Yes, usually the prices on a vending machine are more expensive, right? Yeah, so we can say they're 
overpriced. They're more expensive than normal, more expensive than usual. But what about in the beginning? We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine. Okay, drop into, drop money into, yeah, that makes sense. We put the coins in to the machine and we can actually hear the coins drop. They fall into the machine and then we can purchase our gum or whatever. Okay, so that's easy. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine and our yummy doesn't come out. Can you guess what yummy means? Yummy, Y-U-M-M-Y, yummy, that means our snack or our candy, our gum, whatever the product is that we want to buy. But specifically, yummy means something very tasty. And it's the sound we make if we eat something delicious. We go, mmm, yum, 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 yum. It's yummy. <laughs> Another word for yummy would be goody. G-O-O-D-I-E. Our goody. This morning, I had a goody. I had a brownie, which is like a piece of cake for breakfast. <laughs> it was delicious. Uh, anyway, sorry. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine and our yummy doesn't come out. Oh yeah, that's happened to me. It's happened to all of us. It's very frustrating. What do we do? Well, we shake the machine. We grab the machine and we push on the machine. We shake it. Come on, candy bar. Come on, fall out. Sometimes we kick it. We kick the machine with our foot. Ow, that would hurt. Sometimes we add more money. We, you know, pay the same amount again, hoping to get our goody. But nothing. And sometimes nothing happens. It steals our money. It's terrible, those machines. Now, in this situation... Most of us just walk away. You know, you and I, I assume we just walk away. We give up. But not one man from Iowa. So most of us walk away. But in America, we have 50 states. And one of the states is named Iowa. And there's a man in Iowa who did not walk away. So this situation happened to him, but he did not walk away. So what did he do? While on break at his job, okay, so he was working and, you know, it's an eight-hour shift, but you get a couple of breaks. You get a coffee break and then a lunch break and then another coffee break. So he was on a break. Maybe it was a coffee break. While on break at his job, his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. Okay, so if you're at a company and you're on break, you might have a break room. That's where you can relax and, you know, have lunch or breakfast, read a magazine, take a little nap. That's the break room. And in the break rooms, they usually have vending machines. One with sodas, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and everything and the other with candy bars and other things like that. So his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. So what does it mean to rip someone off? To rip off basically means to steal someone's money. Yeah, so this vending machine in the break room tried to rip him off. So he was not happy. So what did he do? He used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. Okay, now this is the difficult word. Forklift. F-O-R-K-L-I-F-T. Now, I'm going to try to explain. I hope you can imagine. A forklift 
is like a tractor. It's a type of vehicle. And in the front of the forklift, on the ground, it has two long metal bars. And they use these bars. They slide it under something, something really heavy, and then they can pick it up. So a forklift is used to lift very heavy objects, like a vending machine. And this guy used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. Oh, my God. And it worked. He got three more to boot. So not only did he get his candy bar that he paid for, he got three more to boot. He got three extra. And that's what to boot means. To boot means as a bonus, extra, in addition. <laughs> so the guy ended up with four candy bars thanks to the forklift. Wow, that's, that's amazing. <gasps> Unfortunately, he got booted from his job too. Oh, what does this mean? So he got booted from his job. Unfortunately, this is bad news. He got booted from his job. Maybe you can guess he got fired. That's right. He got fired from his job for doing that. Well, you shouldn't use a forklift on a vending machine. Oh, boy. Maybe he thought it was funny. Maybe he was really hungry. I don't know. But that's the story. It's a silly story, but it's a true story. And we had lots of vocabulary. So let's look at those words again. Overpriced. It's one word. O-V-E-R-P-R-I-C-E-D. Overpriced. If something is overpriced, it's expensive. Relatively expensive. At the store, it's probably cheaper. But in a vending machine, candy is usually overpriced. A vending machine. That's a coin-operated machine which sells chips, candy, gum, toilet paper, almost anything. To shake, S-H-A-K-E. That means to move something violently from side to side. You can also think of a salt shaker or a pepper shaker. So when we're eating dinner... Sometimes we add salt to our food or pepper, and those are called shakers. Yummy. A yummy. What is a yummy? A yummy is a snack. It's usually candy or a candy bar. Another word, goody. A goody. G-O-O-D-I-E. Once again, yummy. Y-U-M-M-Y. Iowa. I-O-W-A, one of America's 50 states. It's located in the Midwest, and it's famous for corn. On break. You rest time from work. So if you're on break, that means you're taking a rest from work. To rip someone off. To steal someone's money. To swindle someone. To rip off, R-I-P, O-F-F. -F. It's a two-word verb, a phrasal verb. A forklift, F-O-R-K-L-I-F-T, a forklift. A forklift is a large tractor that has two fork-like prongs, metal bars, that are used to lift very heavy objects. To shake free. To move something violently in order to have something be free. Imagine an apple tree. You see an apple tree and there's an apple up there, but you can't reach it. So you shake the tree. 
until the apple falls. To boot. If you have something to boot or if you get something to boot, that means you get something as a bonus. In addition, extra. Got booted. Oh, this is not good. That means to get fired. Yeah, to lose your job. So it's the same word, B-O-O-T. One definition, to boot, to get something to boot. That is a bonus. But to get booted, that means to get fired. So don't get those expressions confused. Okay? All right. Well, let me try this story two more times, and I'll read it nice and smoothly the first time and normal speed the second time. Here we go. It's happened to all of us. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine and our yummy doesn't come out. We shake the machine, kick it, add more money, but nothing. Most of us just walk away, but not one man from Iowa. While on break at his job, his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. So he used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. He got three more to boot. Unfortunately, he got booted from his job, too. It's happened to all of us. We drop some money into an overpriced vending machine and our yummy doesn't come out. We shake the machine, kick it, add more money, but nothing. Most of us just walk away, but not one man from Iowa. While on break at his job, his break room vending machine tried to rip him off. So he used a forklift to shake his candy bar free. He got three more to boot. Unfortunately, he got booted from his job, too. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Now, all the DDM Live students know that cashews come attached to apples. But did you know the cashew is actually a seed, not a nut? And... They roast your cashews because their shells have a type of poison. Cashews are native to Brazil, and the apple is considered a delicacy. It's very sweet, very juicy, and it has five times more vitamin C than an orange. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Thank you very much, Country Shane. That's right. In DDM, we studied about cashews. And cashew, it's a nut. C-A-S-H-E-W. And it comes from an apple, actually. That's right. It's uh, the bottom part of an apple. (gasps) But did I say it's a nut? Well, we think of it as a nut. But actually, the cashew is a seed. I didn't know that, Country Shane. Thank you. Also, Country Shane said that the cashew apple is a delicacy. That's a tough word. D-E-L-I-C-A-C-Y. A delicacy. A delicacy is something very pleasing to eat. It's considered very nice, even luxurious. Caviar is a delicacy. Do you know caviar? That's the fish eggs. So are truffles. Truffles, T-R-U-F-F-L-E-S. And macaroons, oh yeah, those are delicacies. Very expensive, M-A-C-A-R-O-N-S. Many people spell it M-A-C-A-R-O-O-N-S. Oh, and another one. Medjul dates. Oh, those are delicious. M-E-D-J-O-O-L. Dates. It's a fruit. Very popular in the Middle East. Very delicious. Once again, thanks a lot, Country Shane. (music) 
All right, it's time for some questions. JT Fam has a question. Can you please make a video uh, about pronouncing insects? I N S E C T S. No, I'm not going to make a video, but I'll answer you right here in this podcast. Now, JT Fam says, I pronounce it like insects, I N S E X. But all my friends laugh at me. Well, JT Fam, you're right. That is the pronunciation I N S E C T S. Insects. Now, the perfect pronunciation would be insects. But hardly anyone would say that. The C T S almost always sounds the same as an X. So I'll give you another example. F A C T S. Fax sounds the same as F A X. So JT fam, your pronunciation is perfect and your friends are laughing at you because they are jealous. Quang from Vietnam has a question. He has a hard time, he or she, has a hard time with these four words. I'll spell them first. H-E-A-R-T, H-A-R-D, H-U-R-T, H-E-A-R-D. Yeah, that's tough. Well, the first two, heart and hard. Okay, so this table is hard and my heart in my body. So they're definitely different, Kwong. And the easy way to explain it is when the word ends in a T, you don't have to finish the T, but you need to stop the sound very cleanly. Heart. 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 When a word ends in a D, you don't have to finish the D, but the D is a vibrated sound. So you do need a little bit of vibration. Listen carefully. Hard. Hard. Heart. Hard. Hard. Heart. Can you hear the difference? So the key is that vibration. Even though we don't say hard, we can still stop the D, but there's still vibration. Hard. Okay? And the same thing with the other two words. H-U-R-T, hurt. H-E-A-R-D, heard. Hurt. Heard. Hurt. Heard. So yes, Kwong. Those words are confusing, but you need to master that D sound, the stop D, and the T sound, the stop T. So one more time, heart, hard, hurt, heard. Our next question is from Abdella Ben Musa. I hope my pronunciation is okay. Hello, Coach Shane. I'm one of your fans in Morocco. That's fantastic. First of all, thank you very much for your efforts. All the videos and the podcast, they really help. I have a question. What is the meaning of indeed? And in what in which situations can we use it? Ah yes, I N D E E D. Indeed. Indeed is used to emphasize absolutely. It's cold indeed. Oh my goodness, yes, indeed, it is very cold. Absolutely cold. Sometimes it means extremely, but it's better to think absolutely. Um, Did you enjoy your meal? Indeed. Is your coffee warm enough? Indeed. How is the answer to this question? It's good. Is it good enough? Indeed. Okay? I hope that makes sense, Abdella. And one more question. This is from Abby. Dear Coach Shane, I have finished the eight free 
lessons, the DDM lessons, and they've helped so much. Thank you very much. My question is, how can I register as a DDM member? How often are the new classes, and can I take part in the Hangouts? Okay, so if you want to register as a DDM member, you need to visit this site, dailydictation.blogspot.com. Daily Dictation, D-A-I-L-Y-D-I-C-T-A-T-I-O-N, one word, dot blogspot. B L O G S P O T dot com. And there you can find the registration for DDM. Now, there's actually three different levels for DDM. And daily dictation dot blogspot dot com is for DDM Live. And what DDM Live is is you get a new class every three days, twice a week. So if you register for one month, you get eight classes. And DDM Live members also get Hangouts. That's a live class with me. So if you register for one month, you get eight classes and you get two Hangouts. And the Hangouts are on Saturday and Sunday, the weekend. Actually, they're on, for me, for my time, it's Friday and Saturday, but it depends on where you live. If you live in Asia, it's Saturday and Sunday. If you live in America, it's Friday and Saturday. Um, It's the classes, once again, the live classes are usually the middle of the month and the end of the month. And... uh, They're great classes. Now, this is the announcement that I wanted to make. This week will be the end of the first year of DDM. Yay! Oh, it's been a fantastic year. And it's been amazing. The students who started with me in last year, uh, March are still with me. I would say about 90% of the students have stayed every month in the class. I'm so happy. The students, uh, they enjoy the class. They're learning so much. Their listening has improved. Their pronunciation has improved. A couple of people have gotten better jobs. Several people have traveled overseas. People have noticed, wow, your English is much better. I cannot tell you how proud I am of everybody who has, uh, who's stayed in DDM and who has studied uh, very hard. It's been great. And DDM will continue. Now, like I said earlier, we have three levels of DDM. There's DDM Open. And DDM Open, you start at the beginning. So you get the first eight lessons. Those are free. Then the second month, you get another eight lessons. And you can study on your own. And every month, you get eight lessons. There's no live class, so there's no pressure. DDM Open is perfect for the busy student. And the price is a little bit cheaper. Then there's DDM Live. And DDM Live, you get two lessons a week. And every two weeks, you get a live hangout with me. So this one, if you're going to join DDM Live, you're going to want to try and keep your weekend free so that you can join the hangout and ask your questions and practice your pronunciation with me. And then there's DDM VIP. DDM VIP is just like live, except instead of two live classes, you get six live classes with me every month. However, unfortunately, 
There is no vacancy for DDM Live. The classes are full. (laughs) But, I'm sorry, DDM VIP. But DDM Live is open and DDM Open is ready for you. And I would love it if you joined DDM. Uh, This is, uh, I'm convinced, it's the best English class on the internet. You're not going to get better. Absolutely agree. We work on dictation. We work on pronunciation. We work on speaking. We work on culture. We learn so much in DDM classes. So, if you're thinking about joining DDM, but you're not sure what the classes are like, then I want you to sign up for eight free DDM classes. And you can go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash DDM Santa. www.letsmasterenglish.com slash DDM Santa. You have to sign up your, your name and your email. And then within 24 hours after you sign up, we will send you eight lessons. DDM 1 through DDM 8. Now, these lessons are are big. The files are big because the video files, each video file is about 30 minutes. So the size is very large. So you're going to have to download the files. So I send you a link to my cloud storage. That's my internet Storage. It's like my hard drive on the internet. And I use copy.com. So don't worry. If you don't have copy.com, I'll send you the link. And you can sign up with my link or you can start your own. And then you can download the lessons. So if you like the lessons and you want to sign up, I encourage you to go now because the prices are going to change after one year and the sign up pages for DDM Live it's dailydictation.blogspot.com okay and for DDM Open just go to ddmopen.blogspot.com that's d d m o p e n dot blogspot b l o g s p o t dot com sign up now one more special announcement because it's my 1 year anniversary i'm very happy to announce that i will give 10 scholarships for 1 year now That means you can attend DDM classes for one year for free. You don't have to pay. (laughs) Now, this is for people who cannot afford DDM. If you have a job or if your husband or wife has a job, then I want you to pay for DDM. (laughs) So this is especially for college students or students from a country where the economy is not so good and it's my pleasure to offer 10 scholarships. However, nothing is for free. You know, I've given classes for free and the students sometimes get lazy. So you have to work. So if you want to be a scholarship student, you're going to have to work. Not much. You're going to have to update a blog. And I want that blog to be in your country. So if you're a Russian college student and you're a scholarship student, I want you to make a Russian blog teaching other Russian students English. The English that I teach you. Do you understand? This is actually so important. Remember, everybody... The best way to learn something 
is to teach it. And creating a blog is a fantastic way to teach other people English. So that's the criteria. That's what you need to do. If you want to be a scholarship student, then send me an email. My email address is Daily Dictation Members at gmail.com. One more time. Daily Dictation Members at gmail.com. Can you hear my cat? I apologize. So, uh, 10 people. 10 people for my second year of DDM. And everybody else, sign up now. Get the best prices now because they're going to go up. In about about 10 days, I think. Anyway, that's it. I need to wrap up this podcast. I do want to say a special hello to Berta Granados. Thanks for Podcast 14. It was nice to know that my fellow Mexicans are into the podcast. I hope someday they can join DDM or DDM VIP because me being the only Mexican in this class makes me feel only the lonely. I'm sorry, Berta. That was a terrible version of a great song. Only the lonely. Berta, you're not lonely. But yes, how about some other Mexican students joining Berta? And I also want to say hi to Niranjan's Sapkota. I hope my pronunciation was okay. Hi, I'm a new listener. I'm from the country Nepal. Nepal is famous for the Himalayan mountains And it's a Buddhist country. Niranjans, it's great to meet you. And everybody else, leave some comments on iTunes. Leave some messages anywhere. And I promise I read them all and I'll try to introduce them next week. Take care, everybody. And remember, let's master English. English.